All right, we are here. The Master Cycler Program Coordinator North North American Gathering. <laughs> Who knew this? We I guess this is not super organized in, in any fashion, but it's exciting to all be in the room and um, start getting to know each other. So um, I am kind of proposing an outline of because there's so many of us and Zoom is so impersonal. I thought we could do a ground robin of just who are we, who's in the room, and you know, kind of just you know your name, your jurisdiction or area that you are, um, if you're a new budding program or a long-standing program, and then I was thinking we could break into some smaller groups um, so that we can actually really chew on some conversations if that works all right with you all. I I created three um, group conversations um, and also created some Google Docs so somebody can take notes in each one of them. And I thought we could take like a half hour in, in uh, a topic of choice. So you'll be able to choose your topic um, that you're interested in talking about. Um, talk for a half hour with whoever's in the room that chose to top, talk about that. And then we'll switch topics and then maybe get back together and kind of shared concepts that came out of those conversations. Um, I don't want to be too structured, but I also just I find Zoom to be so impersonal and and to really be able to dig in and learn from each other. Um, I thought it'd be nice to have smaller space. Um, does that sound like a good outline for folks? Yeah. OK. Um, so, um, yeah, and I'll explain if, if you haven't used Google Docs, I'll explain a little bit how we're going to use that and how we'll do breakout rooms. I don't know how much everyone's used some of those tool, the Zoom tools. So I'll just do a little, I, I do a lot of work with master cyclers who never had a computer before. So I do a lot of over explaining probably a process, <laughs> but um, so, um, yeah, so let's go around Robin. Maybe what we'll do is um, we'll um, uh, say your name what jurisdiction you're from, what year your program started um, or is starting, <laughs> some maybe, and um, and then name somebody else um, to, to be the next person. Uh, and, and as we get towards the end, it's always a little like, who, who got left out? You might have to raise your hand to get calls <laughs> as we get <laughs> further down. Uh, so again, my name is Lauren. I'm, um, I am in the Portland metropolitan region, so Washington County, Clackamas County, and Multnomah County. And um, the Master of Cycler program in our region started in 1991. We borrowed the handbook from the King County, um, which is in Washington. And so um, how about, oh, we don't have names on everyone, but how about Pennsylvania? <laughs> Hi, um, I should change my name. Um, my name is Jules Cooper. Um, I work for the Pennsylvania Resources Council. Um, we're an environmental nonprofit. And our, we have two offices. Um, our bigger office is based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and we have another office in Philadelphia. Um, we've been around since 1939 as an organization, so we're pretty old um, as a nonprofit standpoint. <laughs> um, and yeah, um, we are just starting our master recycler program. Um, I started at PRC this fall, and um, one of the tasks I was given was to develop a plan for a future master recycler program. Um, currently, there are no master recycler programs like at all in the state of Pennsylvania, um, and so we would be the first. Um, what we're thinking right now is to start with um, like southwestern Pennsylvania um, and then branch out as um, we like get the hang of everything you know um, but yeah uh, so I'm really like in the like the beginning stages of we've developed the plan um, we don't have funding yet um, but we got funding to develop the plan so that was good but yeah so we're pretty early on um, but it's great to see everyone and I remember I met with Lauren when I was like trying to figure out our program and it was so exciting um when she sent this email so yeah you want to pick somebody to to go next oh yeah um Karen from Louisville Kentucky hi um my name is Karen Maynard and um I'm in Louisville I um I'm the public education supervisor. Um, a couple of years ago, managed to get 
uh, a couple of other employees that do education. So that was nice um, to triple my staff, <laughs> education staff. Um, and uh, we had the idea to create a volunteer base in some way. And of course, I Googled and found Oregon's programs. And I know I reached out to someone and someone was kind enough to send, <laughs> thanks Lauren, um, to send some materials to, to help get us started. And um, we kicked off last year. We did all of our programs virtually and um, have definitely had ups and downs on having volunteer opportunities, but, um, but it was successful. And we had, I guess we have about eight people from last year that are um, kind of considered active, maybe four that are super active. And uh, this year, I'm just wrapping up this month, uh, a second class that we've still done virtually. And uh, we have, I think, 12, uh, people that are uh, interested and um, so we'll see how it goes um, you know always looking to improve things and um, I'm excited to touch base with other people doing the same stuff um, and I'll pass it to um, someone I've met before on the phone or calls um, Karen with a C <laughs> Before we do that, I, before oh, you go to the next one, I forgot, I was also going to, I I love bringing the master cyclers to the room in the conversation as well. And so I forgot that I was going to ask each person to name the most active master cycler in your region, um, if, you, if you have master cyclers. So it's just, just to bring that space, this space, the volunteers are the center of the program, right? So I'm, I'm naming Colleen Johnston, who has done over 2000 hours with our program. So, and maybe we'll let Karen do do that again since I didn't get to. Yeah, um, I would say, I guess um, I have a Jessica May uh, has probably had the most hours and um, and she was someone I already kind of knew. Our daughters have gone to school together. So, um, so it was really fun to have her a part of our program. And we call ours um, I No Waste Ambassadors Pay in OW. So a little play on words there. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Karen Miller. Um, I am with the Cuyahoga County Solid Waste District, which is located in Northeast Ohio, uh, Cleveland area. So Cleveland is in Cuyahoga County. Um, we are, uh, our program, Master Recycler Program, was established by my predecessor uh, in 2013. I started at this job uh, about four months before the pandemic. Um, and prior to me being here, it was taught once a year. I rearranged the format so that we could teach it virtually. And um, in 2020, I taught it uh, once in October of 2020. And then we had so much interest. I taught it again, February, January, or January, February, and March of 2021, which I do not recommend. <laughs> it was crazy. Um, and then uh, I took a break. I was uh, going to teach it again in the fall of 2021, but our interest kind of dropped off. I'm teaching it right now again. So we're in our fifth class of this virtual version of the program. Um, and um, I think that's in a nutshell what we're doing. Um, and as far as uh, active master recyclers, I'm gonna name, um, I don't know that necessarily she has the most hours technically, but uh, she's from our very first class in 2013 and has remained engaged with us this whole time. Um, her name's Michelle Wilhelm and she's very engaged in her community and with us in the district. So yeah. Uh, and I'm going to pass the mic to David McCall. Okay, thank you, Karen. Um, my name is David McCall. I am the Solid Waste Program Director for Tillamook County, Oregon. Tillamook County um, is as far west as you can get. Uh, you go directly west of Portland for about an hour. And we are the land of trees, trees, and ocean breeze. So that'll tell you we're right there in the ocean. Uh, so I am the uh, manager of the whole department for the county. 
Uh, and up until two and a half years ago, we had an education outreach coordinator who retired and we had some difficulties filling that position and then COVID happened and is still happening and still dragging on. And so we still haven't uh, filled that position. So this is one thing that I get to, you know, uh, try to fit into my schedule along with other things. Uh, you know, I don't want to complain, but I'll tell you, we have a department of nine people and we have been four people short for about two years now. So, uh, you know, everybody who's left is taking on a whole lot of extra things. And um, we started our program, I think, about eight years ago. Uh, we got the manual from Marion County, Oregon, and basically, you know, copied, paste, um, you know, cut it apart. And uh, over the past eight years, we have graduated. So we're a small rural county. Uh, we're about 77 miles from north to south uh, along the ocean. And uh, we have about 27,000 people who officially live here. In the summertime, we can easily have 120, 150,000 people here on any given weekend. Um, but, you know, those people who are here on the weekend are not participating in any of our programs like this. They're just here having fun. And as you know, they leave their brains at home when they go on vacation, um, which makes recycling even more of a challenge. So we, uh, with the 27,000 people we have in the county, we have graduated 65, maybe 70 people through our master recycler program over the past eight years. Um, and we do a very localized version of the program. So we include some things like, for example, uh, I think we're the first program to have a um, separate, uh, you know, slot in it, teaching about microplastics. And our master recyclers are basically the people who uh, run and feed our microplastic, um, you know, cleanup program uh, along our beaches every year. Um, we've got some other things, you know, we try to make it very different. We have one of the few um, source separated or source segregated recycling programs uh, that are still, you know, active around. Um, not, so we have not gone commingled here. And so that creates some additional challenges, but also opportunities and the ability to show people that yes, everything that they drop off here for recycling is truly recycled. It doesn't go into some machine somewhere that, you know, we don't know what happens with it. It's actually coming out of our things. Um, can I suggest that we do some of this in the in the smaller groups so that we can really choose some of these questions about how we're doing content and, and just okay. yeah, I just want to yeah. make sure that we don't lose it with the notes, especially. So gotcha. Yeah. So yeah. the master recycler that I want to recognize is a guy named Stephen Kershaw, who has done so much for us. And um, you know, we basically suspended our master recycler program during COVID because the volunteer uh, opportunities were really scarce. We had our last class right at the beginning of COVID and kind of slid out, but didn't get to do anything. Steven has been chomping at the bit to get back involved, you know, since then and has been involved. Unfortunately, we are going to lose him very soon because he and his wife have retired and decided to move to Pennsylvania. So Jules, you know, I may be sending you a gift. Okay, so and with that, I would like to throw the ball over to the person here I know who I have interacted with regularly and a lot over the years, Kelly Bell. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I'm Kelly Bell. I'm with uh, Lane County Waste Management Division. It's part of uh, County Public Works. I am, my title is Master Cycler Coordinator. How cool is that? Um, <clears throat> we own our landfill, which is the most valuable asset in Lane County, I believe. And so because we own our own landfill, um, what people pay to throw trash away is, is, is what pays my salary and my program expenses. I'm part of the Waste Reduction Program, which has also recently expanded. So uh, now I'm part of a team of five people, which uh, is pretty outstanding for this topic in public works. So 
I anticipate uh, having some help uh, as I go through uh, doing a shakeup in the Master Cycle program. We're we're due for a shakeup and a reevaluation, and and uh, so so I'm going to have some legitimate help in in the department where the Master Cycler program resides. What's also true about Master Cycler program is that we have been pulled into in a in a very formal way and in a very upfront way in our solid waste master plan. So instead of being a feel good kind of on the side, uh, my program was taken up right into the center of the work we do at Lane County Waste Management. So um, that's pretty daunting. Uh, I kind of was asking for that for a long time and then it came and now I'm a little verklempt, but it's, it's, it's all good, I uh, have a great team. The, uh, the volunteer I wanna acknowledge uh, for 2021, his name is Norm Jarvis. He was from the Cottage Grove class. We do, a, we, do we try to uh, do as much rural uh, inclusion as we can. Leslie. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Um, Leslie O'Malley, I'm the Waste Reduction Manager for the City of Santa Cruz. And I have wanted to start a master recycler program since I first entered the industry in 2012. It took me till 2018 um, to be in a position to launch one, and ours is an, an amalgamation of a lot of different things, a lot of different resources, and so several of you are on the call, and I thank you for your input and your support in launching this. Um, the master recycler I'd like to recognize is Mary Scheller. She is just a superstar. She also is a, a big volunteer with one of our local uh, beach cleanup organizations called Save Our Shores. And she just gets it. That's all I can say is she just gets it. And she's been a huge help and a huge inspiration. And she just makes her fellow master recyclers want to join her at that level. I'm going to pass it over to my friend and colleague down in Burbank, Amy Hammett. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Amy Hammes, as Leslie just said. And uh, yeah, I, um, our program is called the Waste Warrior Program. It did start off with the model of, of Seattle's uh, Master Recycler Program. And I have been with the, the program, I think, started in Burbank. It was before me, but probably in 2013. And then I took it over in 2016. Um, and I kept the name for about a year or two and then realized that the format and the curriculum that we were going, uh, we were doing really wasn't about recycling better. Um, it really was a civic engagement from the perspective of understanding our consumption-based economy, how we got here and how we get out of this and how uh, local action can really help move the needle and create the communities that they want. So um, we changed it to the Waste Warrior Program. And uh, during COVID, I, did, I haven't done it in two years, but I'm bringing it back. Uh, Earth Day, kicking it off on Earth Day. How appropriate, right? Um, and because the way we do ours, it really doesn't work in a, a Zoom type of format. We really do need that human connection because the first day, I work at a materials recovery facility. And so that first day, they do a tour of the recovery facility. And then in the afternoon, I make them do a, a waste audit. <laughs> so they can really, I mean, we just throw them in on that first day so they can see what, when you throw something away, what does that mean? So they can get that visual and really connect the dots and it sets the stage for the rest of the uh, zero waste classes that we're gonna be taking. And so, um, yeah, so that's it. And, and with the civic engagement part, we, oh, someone mentioned before about landfills. We own our own landfill as well here too. It's not for profit though. There's no funding that comes from it. It's actually just for our solid waste services use. So we have a unique incentive here in Burbank to actually conserve because there's nothing tied to that. And we want to preserve our landfill as long as possible. And so we do a tour of the landfill uh, with our students and it's the most popular class, which is kind of insulting because I put a lot of work into the other seven classes, but the landfill tour is like the most popular. But what happens is, as I said before, it's civic engagement. They leave so proud of that uh, facility because they meet the people, they meet the public servants and it becomes very real to them. And they've become like, they value that, oh my God, we own this and yes, we do need to preserve it. So it's just connect, helping um, our students connect the dots as to why this stuff is important to really get into reduce, reuse, then recycle. And then also advocating for policies that's going to lead to more product stewardship 
So we're really trying to get ahead of this as much as possible and connect the dots. We have about uh, 25 people in each class, um, usually sells out and it's free, obviously, but it closes, uh, I get enough response within two weeks because we've just got a lot of built up demand. Um, and in, I think the years we've had to stop and go, but we've graduated about 120 people. Um, the volunteer uh, that I want to recognize is Karen Lau. One of the things that happens when you be, join the Waste Warrior program, you're usually a female, unfortunately, it's very <laughs> gender skewing, unfortunately, but they're usually moms by then. They have kids in school. And one of the biggest complaints I get from a lot of the students is that they don't think their schools are doing enough. And so one of the things that I had worked with them, mentoring them, it's like, okay, well, ask not what your school can do for you. What can you do for your school? Let's, how do you move that needle? And so they formed the Eco, Burbank Eco Council, which is kind of like a PTA with no money, um, but it's just all these parents with kids at different schools. And hopefully they, I think they've represented all schools in the district that work on programs locally within their school and then share this information. And, and so they can create pilot programs that actually can be scalable throughout the entire schools. And so that helps me in my position because I can't do it all. So I've got all kinds of waste warriors out there doing all kinds of civically minded uh, engagement rather than actual volunteer hours for me, which they're also very generous when I have events to help me on that too. So um, I don't, I'm on my phone right now. So I gotta put my glasses on because I don't know who next to, uh, up. and I also am home with my dogs. Uh, let's see, Dakota, have you talked yet? I can, uh, I, Dakota can can't. I, I just got in a place where yeah. Oh, you, do. All right. you can't. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, I'll be really fast, though, because I already typed it. Um, but yeah, thanks. Um, I'm parked, and I'm all good. Safe now. Hi, folks. My name is Dakota Tangretti. Um, I am the Master's Record Coordinator for Marion County, Oregon, like just right south of the metro region with Lauren. Um, and so, yeah, we're going through a rebrand. Um, we've been around since 1994, but very similar sort of format to Master Recyclers generally. And um, we're trying to really move past and as Lauren sort of did with her revamp back in 2015, 2016 of let's go towards sustainable materials management. Let's think of, you know, life cycle of products. Um, you know, how can we really engage the repair movement? Um, you know, other, other topics that really put us beyond recycling is, you know, our state agencies, Oregon DEQ, Department of Environmental Quality is really telling us that um, recycling is just such a fractional piece of this puzzle in terms of emissions. So trying to move us more towards climate action strategies and do some of that, those opportunities for volunteers too, whether it's you know, getting mini grants for them to do bigger projects um, and making the program more accessible. So we're going to try a different name um, and see if we can, again, go and beyond recycling in that way as well. Um, because there's always that underlying, even though we do stuff that's not always recycling, some folks are like, oh, I have this identity as a recycler. And so it stops there sometimes. So um, my person I want to acknowledge is Judy Skinner. She's coming up on a thousand hours and it was one of our OG classes from like 2000s. And she is wonderfully engaged. So thanks, y'all. Excited to hear more. Can you name another person, Dakota, or shall I just do that for you? Yeah, I'm on the phone. Say, okay. Say. How about Emily McGill? Hey, yeah, so happy to talk. This is like beyond exciting since we started the program in 2015 and um, have always had the dream of making an international network of our programs and just, you know, being the, the wave of the future. So um, I'm up on unceded Coast Salish territory in Vancouver, British Columbia. I think we might be the only Canadians on the call, me and Aol. Um, we are under the nonprofit society promoting environmental conservation, and we've been grant funded for five years. Um, really excited for the small group breakouts and would really, really love to connect with people also after this. So I'm going to share my, I don't know, I guess LinkedIn in the chat. Um, feel free to hook me, hook up if you like to do that. Um, I want to recognize Nick Hasty. He's a more recent graduate. He participated in our first online course because we can do Zoom. Our field trips have been virtual. Um, and he has been really engaged ever since he graduated and he actually ran with our idea of having an annual conference. Uh, so we now do a, a conference for our graduates uh, every fall with his support. Um, yeah, and I'll pass it to Aol to kind of pick up where I leave off. Thank you. So my name is Aol LeBel, also from Vancouver, Canada. And um, like Emily said, we started at 2015. Um, something, other things that are interesting about our course is that we actually um, trying to go really serious on 
onto the subject of behavior change. Because yes, we talk about material, we talk about a collection, we do the field trips and people also love the, the landfill of Vancouver. It's a very interesting place to go and see and all kind of other things. But behavior change is the crooks, is kind of the center of how our work in our society is able or unable to do change. And uh, we have a, another facilitator that works with us. His name is Daniel Rotman, and he's very, very experienced in psychology or the, psycho the psychology aspect of behavior change. We've got some PhDs in UBC and SFUs that are kind of uh, related or we, we're in contact with once in a while. And uh, it's a very interesting subject. We also started to look into entrepreneurship within the graduates or like to promote entrepreneurship to the graduate within the course that we're doing. So there's it's unending amount of stuff. Uh, I think we also one of the only, well, we're probably not the only, but one of the main uh, courses that are not funded by the municipality. And we are a little bit struggling because of that. We are completely grant dependent. Uh, Vancouver City is, and Metro Vancouver is kind of smiling at us and say, yeah, you're doing a great job, but they're not at all ready to uh, support us. And if somebody's got any idea of how to go about that, that would be a great thing. Otherwise we apply for grants and we get very, very, very small. I don't even want to tell you guys what's our budget, but we're doing a good job. So uh, thank you. And I'll pass it over to Lorenza. Hi everyone, I'm Lorenza Zabel. I work at a small nonprofit in Madison, Wisconsin called Sustain Dane. And we partnered with the city of Madison uh, last year, it was our first year of the Master Recycler course. And we're doing it again this year. Um, and it was all virtual. And um, my favorite or a master recycler that I'd like to call out is Mary Powell. She did a month long course. She's a retired school teacher and um, she did like a month long <laughs> program on her next door that is still active to this day. I, and this was months and months ago that she did it. So I check in on that from time to time. Yeah. And uh, next I'll go with Brian also from Madison. Yep, so the, the, the city half of what Lorenzo mentioned. So Brian Johnson, I'm the recycling coordinator and public information officer for the streets division here at the city of Madison. Uh, we partnered with Sustained Aid last year to kick off our master recycling course. It's something that um, I wanted to do here for a while to kind of help get more volunteers to talk to more of their neighbors to talk about this for a little while. I was able to finally connect with Sustained Aid to help make it a reality, which was nice. And then actually that's when I Googled that there were other communities already thought of this stuff. It was like, after we thought of this, was like, I was like, oh, people figured this out. Like what took me so long? But the, um, but anyway, the, um, the one um, volunteer I like to mention um, is Josie Goebel or Gable. I can't remember how to pronounce her last name exactly. Like she's been active for a while at her church and she's part of this class and she's part of this green team and creation care thing Like every event I go to. She seems to be there too when stuff other what she's been up to at the church and the newsletter she's writing and the, Terra cycle thing she's trying to get us off the ground too like she does a lot of work at her church so good job Josie keep it up and, um so the next person I'm running out of people who haven't talked right so Wendy right I think Wendy's gone yes I'm here I'm here, I'm here. hello good afternoon um we are on year four of Master Recycler and um it's amazing. We are on a mission to combat contamination specifically and how to recycle right. Um, I don't want to call out one master recycler. We have a fantastic team of eco warriors. I would say two thirds have completed the mandatory 20 hours. Pretty close to two thirds worked on their 40. And since we're a new program, um, that's pretty incredible, I think. And Wendy, where are you? 
Oh, I am from the Stark Tuscan Recycling District in Ohio. Ohio. Awesome. I like that Eco Warriors. Great. Yes. <laughs> so I think the last person left is STW. Oh, that's me. Oh, that's you. Oh, okay. Okay. So then I think, oh no, Peter. Yes, from Vancouver. Oh, and Rachel. Rachel. Thanks. Okay, we'll do Peter and then Rachel. Hi, everyone. I'm, I'm from the other Vancouver, Vancouver, Washington. And we are Clark County, just very close to Portland, Oregon. Uh, we're about 500,000 people in our county. And our master, we are a master composter recycler program. Uh, we've been going since about 1994. And currently I'm in my uh, sixth training right now as we speak. We've got 45 folks coming through the program. And uh, we had to turn people away as well. So we're looking at maybe doing another one this spring, summer. Uh, we also do community workshops. We have demonstration sites for our composting. Uh, and then of course, all of our outreach. So I, I love the, the discussion about names. This is great. Uh, I, I wanna pull out one of our volunteers, uh, Ron Ferguson. He does about 500 hours a year for me. Uh, it's amazing how uh, some of these folks actually find mission and purpose in their lives by volunteering for our programs. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Rachel. Um, I'm currently with Metro Nashville and Davidson County, I'm helping them pilot a program. Um, I'm serving with the AmeriCorps, so this is my like service term is to help launch and pilot this program here in Nashville, and Davidson County. Um, we reached out a couple months ago, I think, um, just kind of playing around with the idea and then realized we could actually do this. We could make it virtual and have um, our idea is to do six weeks of virtual sessions. And um, every other week there is a in-person tour of our like compost facility, MRF and um, transfer station. So we don't have a volunteer to highlight yet, um, but hopefully within the next year, we will have many, many great ones. Absolutely. Awesome. Wow, what an amazing conglomeration and like a total range of, of where we are and lessons learned that we can all bring into this room. I'm excited about this. I, I think we'll have to talk at the end about how do we keep this going and do we, you know, I do have all the names and I'll put it into that document. Then we've had five or six people fill out the document that I sent you all, but it'd be great if you um, can follow up with it. Uh, but I'll put all your contacts in there at least so that everyone has out your contact information. And, and if you know other people in other parts that I didn't get to, um, please add them too to this conversation. Um, so I was proposing, so I, I created some um, breakout rooms for the number of uh, people that are in this room. I thought maybe four was about the right size so that we split up enough that there is some good content in each room. Um, and I created one that was about content, um, like, you know, what do you talk about in the class? What do you, what is, you know, in your handbook? What is the training about? The other one is about how do you manage volunteers? This is based on some of your feedback that you all put into your documents and everything, but like, how do you manage the volunteers? How do you recruit? Um, what kind of placement do you do? What kind of partnership? Um, how do you retain them? How do you make sure they're feeling satisfied? Um, the third was diversity, equity, and inclusion. And then I just left a wild card in case some topic came up that seems to be a theme that's coming in this conversation. Um, and also want to see if there's anything else that people are like, oh, I really wanted to talk about this. I'm seeing kind of a rebranding conversation in the chat. Maybe that could be the wild card. Um, I mean, I have to say that that one of the things that I really worked on with rebranding is not just moving upstream to to, to consumption issues, but also rebranding the program. So it's not just about a class and teaching 30 people at a time, but about being a volunteer program based program um, so that the volunteers um, and the work that we do, that the course is actually a training rather than just a class. And when we decide to have a class, it's only because we know we have active ways that they can volunteer. Um, and so I've kind of flipped, that's been a kind of a rebranding we've done. So I think that this that rebranding thing could really go in a number of different ways, like, you know, rethinking this, this model as well. Um, does that sound like the right 
three room three rooms I have, and then the wild card would be kind of this rebranding thing, or what? Anybody have something else they want to throw out there that they're like, oh, I really wanted to talk about this. I'm wondering if um, requirements might mm -hmm. fall under curriculum a little bit. I get, I was thinking about joining that one, but throwing it out. I don't know if it should be a separate group, but that's yeah, kind of that's good. A conversation I'd like to have. So I, I kind of hear that in two different directions. One is requirements for what counts as volunteer hours or what counts as being a volunteer. Does Because it, if it's what counts as volunteer hours, that seems like content. But if it's what counts, does that sound right? That it would be in that conversation? Yeah, let's put it, let's put that in the, the I think that's good. I really agree that that really describes whether they're working on the issues that are at mission. So that's a good one. Okay, good. So I also, um, let's, so I'm going to put rebranding as the other one, the fourth one. And I put together, I'm going to ask that each group decide who's going to take notes and somebody can, can write notes into these Google Docs. I'm putting the Google Docs in the chat right now. Um, the new topic is that rebranding one. So it's a, what is, the, what's the training in the course, the content, what's the volunteer, the volunteer management, the diversity, equity, and involvement, and new topic, um, which is now rebranding. Um, and now I'm going to create, uh, uh, open up these rooms. <laughs> So valuable. Lauren, you're getting like really big karma points for pulling us all together today. It all feels good. So <laughs> amongst the peers, <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> Emily, if you didn't already, um, and I'll look back, but could you put a link to your program or stuff in, in there for Emily? In the chat? Yeah. Or on the, on the sure. doc or yeah, I, I will do so. And, um, and like, I'm a documentation uh, termite. I don't know what to call myself. I build documentation like, like it's my job. It is my job, I guess. Um, <laughs> so I created a folder where I would love people to drop absolutely anything they want to share. And I know there was a specific request from Rachel because you're building a program. Jules, it sounds like you've already got a pretty good plan. But yeah, I'm happy to, I'll drop some things that we have publicly available. Um, anyway, I'm going to share that link. Uh, too. Yeah, so that's what I was hoping we might have as this conversation. How can we continue this dialogue? And I, I definitely can share back everything that was collected today with all the Google Docs. And we also had that initial document that some people started filling in. I'm actually going to use that one to, to have all our names and contacts in there. So if you don't want that to be in there, let me know. But I'm going to um, try to, and then please, again, if you know other organizations that are that, that I didn't reach out to, um, please ask them to, to put themselves in there too. Um, it seems like there's some key topics that, that people wanted to talk about that you know, I know that diversity and inclusion was one that people have been talking about, which it just wasn't your top thing today. Um, so I wanted to see if we want some people to maybe take some leads and having some smaller conversations and maybe also some conversations about how do we create structure around being connected to each other. Um, 
what do y'all think? So does some people want to, I, I'm not going to be able to keep doing it all. So <laughs> is there some other folks that are like, Ooh, I want to run with this part of it or that part of it. Um, I will definitely get it started with that first document that, and get everybody in there. But Emily, it sounds like you have some, some good structure already going with some sharing Tools. Sure. Yeah. Sorry. I was distracted doing the things I, yeah. <laughs> I will momentarily share this folder. I've just added the shortcuts to the two documents that we had and I'm laboriously trying to add, um, the spreadsheet you created, but I can commit to, I guess, I think you didn't open copy us on your emails, Lauren, which is good practice, yeah. but I think everyone's got their email addresses in here. Like I'm, I can say, I can send out an email with like a when to meet scheduler to see if we could have like maybe another call in April. Mm -hmm. I know our, our course is like getting started in March. So April would probably be best for us if I'm going to host something. Yeah. A raise of hands, would people be up for like another call like this? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So I, uh, I'll share, I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm going to put into that document, all the content, uh, all the contact information that I had. And um, so you'll be able to have that list um, really sh shortly to probably later today. So it'll all be in that document. Um, yeah. And I'm, um, I think that there was some rebranding kind of thing, conversation that people were having, as well as diversity and inclusion um, were, were things that, too, that people wanted to talk about but didn't raise to the topic for people today. Uh, maybe if people want to, is there anybody who wants to take a lead on either of those? I noticed Dakota is not in the room anymore, who was one of the people who brought up diversity and inclusion, um, and I know Kelly was interested in that. I think Oregon's got a, a mandate. It's actually part of our our requirements right now and so we're especially which is awesome that <laughs> it's driving us to do that um but uh um just on the rebranding thing i guess i can comment that we ha have now a caveat that when we're talking about mastery it's um it's the skill of mastery it has nothing to do with master over um mm -hmm. and so we're sticking with the title for now because we find it's interesting the participants we get with this um, and how surprised they are that we're actually all about waste prevention. Like that's actually part of the value for us that we still have recycling in the title because mm -hmm. a lot of people think recycling is the solution, so we don't mind it. Yeah. And then on, on the DEI stuff, we, for the first year this year, are going to be reserving five spots in our class for Indigenous folks um, from across BC. And we're doing specific outreach to communities to see if they can help us get those seats filled. But we don't have any value statements. And the land acknowledgement that we do at the start of every class um, we invite participants to share their land acknowledgement, and then we will add any other territories that we're covering in our slides for future classes. Yeah, I think it would be really great. To, I mean, I, I honestly would really love to have, like, dig into that topic. So, uh, you know, let, I, I'm actually suggesting maybe we need to have that be a topic that we we go into in a, in a future one, because I want to capture all these things that are happening around. Um, yeah. Um, Sorry, I so, no, no, that's okay. Um, so, what, maybe as we're talking about the next group, maybe we can make sure that that's one of the things that the folks that want to to attend that, that that'll be one of the topics we can dig into. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else feel like, oh, I'll offer this or I want this for the next round? <laughs> yeah. just wanted to point out, um, we've started a LinkedIn group in the chat. Mm -hmm. So feel free to connect there. Um, could be a great way to kind of keep up with waste information as well. I just wanted to say I shared it in our small group, but this has really been great. And this is just what I needed. I, it's been a bummer year and a half, two years, and we've got mm -hmm. a lot going on in California with SB 1383. And my heart is with this subject. So thank you all. It's really been great. Yeah, yay. Thank you, Leslie. I agree. I just was like, I, honestly, the email I sent out to you all, it started with like, is it Oregon? Is anybody in Oregon even still there besides Kelly, who I was in communication with? And then I was like, oh, yes, more Oregonians are still out there. And then I was like, well, maybe I should ask even further. And I was like, oh, there, there's still so much happening. It's so exciting. And yes, we're struggling to make it happen, but it's it's there. And, and this is a good shot in the arm for for me, too. 
I just wanted to mention, I know you did LinkedIn. Um, I'm not in LinkedIn very much uh, often anymore, but um, Slack, we could form our own Slack version of this and share news and documents and all of our pieces and things like that. So I don't know if that would be something you guys would be interested in that. Or there's another platform that's just cool too. But you just need to share each other's curriculum and, and the new articles. Cause I, I don't have, I have kind of a, a loose curriculum, but then at, throughout the year, I find an article that I think is really relevant to this particular course I'm going to teach. And then I shove it in to Slack as kind of like my holding. And then I go through each, you know, all the stuff I've saved to see, okay, where's it all going to fit? So I, it would just be an interesting way to share things easy and then comment and ask questions and collaborate that way. So. So correct me if I'm wrong, but that is, is kind of the structure that you've already started building, Emily. Is that right? Is a sharing platform, and is that what you're? Yeah. I don't want to start creating two structures. Like, oh yeah, no, 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 that's fine. So they would they would be complementary. Like I agree, Amy, with the idea of having like a chat forum. I actually, aside from Master Recycler, design a lot of distributed governance models to try to be like post corporate and stuff. I think that maybe. Let's start with the drive. I mean, my suggestion and my preference in terms of my capacity would be if starting with a drive folder and like sharing stuff there and maybe just having the email list. And then in April, okay. if enough people want to try Slack, because we, we like we have a Slack too. And there's been really like, I, I, we could even offer our Slack if people want to join it. Like, please come join our Slack because there's no one talking in it. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, let's start with the drive. I'll, I'll share it in the chat right now. Okay. Okay, so Emily's going to help us with some structure, and maybe Amy, you can start throwing in the slack in the next stage of this. Of uh, yeah, I really, oh, no. I mean, I think like, yeah, no, no worries. This is this is absolutely fine. It just it was the, the commenting and things, so that's fine. Cool. Anything else? Everyone's like, want to make sure that we get going before the next round. I. I love, we started in our classes, some of them, like the first and the last class on Zoom, we go around and just say like a word or a sentence about how we're feeling leaving a thing. Like that, that could be a thing we could do on closure. If anyone else doesn't mm -hmm. have like takeaways from the documents. I like it. You want to start it, Emily? <laughs> okay, sure. Um, and yeah, sorry, when we do it for flow, um, Someone usually calls out a name. So Lauren, can, are you comfortable just like call out names so that we don't have to call each other? Oh, okay, thank you. Um, wow, is my word. Wow, cool. Finally, man, excited, eager. Wish I had all the money in the world to pay me to like just organize all of this conversation. <laughs> so gonna be looking for funding for this. But yeah, so, so grateful and happy and excited and made my day. I think it was, is it Ail? Am I saying your name right? Ail, yeah. Ail, sorry. Um, I can say, yeah, it's really interesting. Eye-opening. Amy. Inspired. Brian. Trying to make Karen talk to this person named Heidi Rupke that I know from Memphis who wants to start a master recycler course. And like, if there are, I know Kentucky, I don't know where Louisville, I know Louisville, Memphis are not close to each other like that, but it seems like they might be a, you might be a better resource for them than I can. So like, I love those connections like this and hopeful to kind of keep this going and see how we can learn to keep making these, like all of our programs a little better together here with this mm -hmm. stuff. And, um, so yeah, so if you get a strange email from some person named Heidi Karen, that's what I'm doing. That's my fault. <laughs> so that's my fault. David. So Amy stole my word. So I'm going to use the word I'm feeling collaborative. Mm -hmm. It's a really great to see so many people in so many different areas um, going for the same goals and doing this together. Thank you, Lauren, for putting this together. Mm -hmm. Karen. Yeah, I'm inspired and collaborative and excited and all the words. So uh, <laughs> thanks for putting this together and I'm happy to be a part of it. All the words. Kelly. 
I have a phrase, embodied energy. Um, I really appreciate you, Lauren, because you are trying to capture and preserve what exists so that we have something to spring forward from, including all of the work you've done for so many years. So thank you for such a thoughtful transition plan and for including us all in it. <laughs> Thanks. For those of you who don't, don't know what Kelly's referring to, I am retiring on July 1st. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, uh, Leslie. Um, I feel like I mostly said it, but the final word I would just say is that I'm really hopeful. And um, oh, I've forgotten. Uh, Jules, yes. <laughs> Sorry about the name thing again. Um, I'm feeling energized I feel like especially in Pennsylvania like the waste field can be like pretty stagnant any improvements um so many like different layers of people you have to go through bureaucracy and uh it was really nice talking to everyone and like getting to hear about all of your programs and hopefully being able to incorporate some of those ideas into ours when we start it hopefully some point in the future Awesome. Pete? Yeah, thank you. Great to meet everyone. I'm feeling supported. Mm -hmm. And it keeps popping around. Rachel? <laughs> um, I'm feeling fulfilled. Nice. And is it Kaylee? That yeah, that's it. Um, I'm feeling reinvigorated and happy to know that there's so many people far and wide working on similar projects. <laughs> We're keeping it afloat as best we can. <laughs> nice. I don't think I missed anyone. The STW is a is a shadow, right? Somebody's listening, and I think that's not a separate person. Okay. Yes. So, and yeah, I'm feeling connected <laughs> in a way that I could think I didn't realize I was missing really but it's nice to have peers I think as some of it is like people who are thinking about volunteers and thinking about you know that piece of this whole work that we all do so yeah thanks so much for for joining jumping in on this crazy thought that I had which was really random email that I sent out so um, we'll, we'll be doing more of this and um, I'll be following up hopefully today I'll get everything all it together and send out to you but it may be early tomorrow that I'll get it all together so yeah I'm looking forward to continued conversations well thank you for doing this before you retired <laughs> happy to do it all right see you all later bye everyone bye everyone bye everybody thank you bye